Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on Joe Chem. All right gang, this is gonna be a video that's on the shorter side. All I wanna do, now that we've talked about, you know, we had been introduced to phenols and we learned how to make them and we've done various different crazy things that we kind of never done before regarding phenol uh, in our organic career. I just wanna take a second to do a little mini video on things we can do with phenol that are pretty similar to things we've done with alcohols in the past. So the first thing I wanna talk about is phenol's amphoteric ability, right? So just like normal alcohols, we know that they can function, they can donate H plus and they can accept H plus. So they can act as both as an acid or a base, hence the word amphoteric. But so phenol can do the exact same thing. However, because phenol has this uncanny amount of resonance and these electrons can go in here and all around, these electrons are not just limited to the oxygen. They're not just there all the time. They're delocalized in the cyclic aromatic structure. As a result, phenol is amphoteric, but is much better at the donation of H plus aspect because taking on that extra charge here and then de de you know, delocalizing it further here is something it can do very well, but also these electrons here needed to go out and snatch an H plus they're not just chilling on this oxygen all the time. Like I said, they're vacationing all around this ring. They're delocalized. So amphoteric phenol is, but not extremely good in the base department, not in the I'm gonna snatch H plus department, okay? So just wanted to get that out of the way. I just wanna talk about two more things in this video. One's gonna kind of be where we have um a like phenol ether derivative, how we can kind of revert it back to a phenol. And then, that's right, we're bringing back the Williamson ether synthesis baby, but in the context of phenols. So let me erase this and we'll get right to it. Okay gang, so let's take a look how we can take something like this, which you can call an alkoxy benzene, right, because we have an alkoxide attached to benzene and we can kind of use it to get back our phenol. So this will be basically how, how do we go from our alkoxy benzene to a phenol and then we'll do the ether, the Williamson ether synthesis, which is basically this, but in reverse. Okay, so like I said, uh, you know, these phenols or phenol derivatives aren't super basic, right? Because of the fact that these electrons are delocalized in this aromatic system. However, they can still act as a base but they're gonna need some help. Like they will get protonated in the presence of a strong acid. So basically the acid has to dictate what's going to happen with our aromatic piece. So no surprise here, we have a very strong acid in HBr. What we can do is oxygen will be attracted to that strong H+, electrons will go on to the bromine. So no surprise, we have this going on and what's super weird to think about and I thought about this the first time I looked at a problem like this is that all we did was make this a really good leaving group which is just phenol right so basically this ET this ethyl which I can draw out like this if we'd like is a carbon that is primed for SN2 basically it's not that sterically encumbered but it has this great big old leaving group over here, right? We know it's stable, phenol is stable. The Br minus we just kicked off, it's gonna be interested in this carbon, so we just attack right here, dump electrons over there. We get our phenol, which is the leaving group, which is weird, we get what we want almost because we made it into a good leaving group and it got kicked off, and we made ethyl bromide. So this carbon right here that I'm gonna dot is this dotted carbon right there. So really cool, if you have an alkoxy benzene and for some reason you wanna generate phenol, super easy to do that. Okay again, now what I wanna show you how to do, and I don't even have to because technically you know the Williamson ether synthesis, so you know what I'm gonna be telling you about. I wanna know how to run this back in reverse. I wanna know how we start with phenol and we get some type of alkoxy benzene. And don't worry, it's super easy. So just let me clean this up and we'll get after it. Okay gang, let's get on this blast from the past and look at this Williamson ether synthesis. So, if we take in what we have going on right here, we have you know a phenol derivative, right? We have phenol and then we have chlorine in that 
metaphysician from our, our, our hydroxy group, and uh, we have some reaction conditions here. So let's just take it one step at a time. So you can see we just have some mild base conditions on the first step. And remember, phenol is very acidic. So we don't need the craziest base in the world to start this thing off, right? Remember, while we did do SN2 or an attack type thing with halo arenes, we needed really high temperatures and pressures. So that's not going to happen here. All this hydroxide is focused on is ripping this proton off right here. So the very first step of this reaction will be hydroxide from our reaction conditions deprotonating the oxygen in phenol, the phenol part of our structure. So all we have is this right here. And basically all we've gener generated is an atom that's gonna be better at nucleophilic attack. And you can see in the second step, all we're doing is tossing in an alkyl halide, something that is a great substrate for SN2 because we have a great leaving group and we have a great, um, you know, we're not sterically encumbered. So, this is propyl bromide, right? Primary carbon. All we're going to do is just attack right here and boot bromine. So, just going, that was just a, I just realized I've been blocking a lot of my videos. I'm trying to do that less. But all we're doing is tacking three carbons onto this oxygen right here. And voila, that chlorine was just for decoration. And that is our final product. So this was honestly, Naming the reaction was more work than actually doing it. You all knew how to do this before even watching this segment of the video. It's just a simple acid-base reaction to just prime this structure to be a better nucleophile and then toss in something that's ready for attack. I do wanna do one more example. It's not so much ether generation, but you'll see how you, we can then use phenols to do lots of chemistry that we've learned in the past. So just let me erase this and I'll show you. Okay gang, let's tackle this last example and call it a video. Okay, so we can see that we've been given some type of phenol derivative here. Nothing special, just phenol with a methyl group in the pair, you know, relationship position, so nothing, nothing fancy. So in over our magical reaction arrow, we see that we have an acid chloride, so a little blast from our carboxylic acid derivative past. And we can see that we have NaOH and water, maybe a cleanup, maybe doing some chemistry, I guess we'll find out. So, remember uh, if we brain blast ourselves back to carboxylic acid derivatives, acid halides are very reactive and they are attacked via an addition elimination mechanism, right? We either add a soft nucleophile one time or a hard nucleophile twice, right? So remember our hard nucleophiles, Grignards, alkyl lithiums, and hydride from LAH. And soft nucleophiles are basically everything else under the sun. So, clearly we have nothing super nucleophilic here, nothing crazy. So this is a soft nucleophile. We will definitely be doing an addition, an addition elimination mechanism one time on this acid chloride. So what's definitely going to happen first is the oxygen here will attack our carbonyl carbon and these electrons are going to kick up. So I'm gonna draw this out even though I know you're all pros at addition elimination mechanisms at this point in time. So what I'll do is I'll kick this over here. Oh minus, I'll keep my CL over here. And this is gonna be a big old mess, but. I'm gonna be lazy, I'm gonna do the circle for the aromatic bonds. Okay, so remember, we basically created our tetrahedral intermediate. So it formed, and now we're gonna collapse it. So these bonds, we're gonna reform our carbonyl carbon and we're gonna put our good leaving group off, which is chlorine. So over here, what we have, didn't touch this whatsoever. Doesn't matter that I drew the ME, but I'm just gonna do it for consistency. So then we have our oxygen with an H over here, plus charge. And what we have is bonded here. We have our carbonyl two carbons off it, right? Because the carbon carbons are here, and then one, two. Draw us a little bigger, because we got all the space, so why not? Didn't think I did a great, there we go, there we go. Okay, cool. So, that's step number one. So step two, just a little cosmetic cleanup. We're just gonna bring hydroxide in. It's gonna clean this up. So, I hope you all can see, the reason why I included this problem is that 
We don't have to wait for a bunch of new reactions to be handed to us. With phenols, they're very much like alcohols, you know? Slight differences, especially when it comes to, you know, the basicity of the O, the oxygen. But regardless, we can do all the same things that we did with, like, you know, regular alcohols with phenols. We can attack carboxylic acid derivatives. We can make ethers. We can transform, you know, alkoxybenzenes into good leaving groups, have something attack it to regenerate the original alcohol it came from. Okay, gang, not a super long video, maybe not the most enlightening video, but one that I think uh, deserved to be in the pantheon of Joe Kemp videos. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.